A force in the universe has been driving us since the beginning of our time. The pull of a better future is a gift that can bring us everything we need and want. What evolves humans is the ability to pass on to the next generation skills and knowledge to make life better. It's in our DNA. Skills passed down from fathers to sons, mothers to daughters, families to children, grandparents to the generations that follow them. That driving force to improve was defined by one of Napoleon Hill's contemporaries, W. Clement Stone. Stone called the need for humans to improve divine discontent. You grow because of your gift to that other person. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Discontent has been the challenge for all humans since people lived in caves. At one time, the cave itself was an improvement. The desire to create a better life for those who follow began here. Our journey to improve continues and the opportunities for exceptionalism are greater than any other time in history. Some things are not taught in school. I was 19. And if you're, if you're sitting in this room saying, I haven't read it yet, that's a mistake. That's an error in judgment. Think and Grow Rich is the all-time best business book in history. There's a million millionaires, a million millionaires that said this was the book that changed everything in my bit. This was the book. But I read it when I was 19 years old for the first time. Someone gave me a copy of Think and Grow Rich and my life has never, ever, 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 ever been the same. What secrets have been handed down in the many teachings of Napoleon Hill over time to create a better life from generation to generation? Think and Grow Rich is just one of the many books authored by Napoleon Hill. There are hundreds of speeches, articles, and many books co-authored by Hill that reveal even more secrets. Secrets that have made many wealthy, the Napoleon Hill Foundation has archived hundreds of these materials. Some were revealed in your Right to be Rich Part 1 of the documentary about Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill. This documentary includes the story of W. Clement Stone and others inspired by Napoleon Hill. In this episode, we'll answer the question, are the same secrets relevant today? It's one small step Skills man. change with new technologies but principles remain the same. Inspired by Napoleon Hill, Bruce Lee used one of the success principles taught by Hill to achieve success. Of course, he starred in the Green Hornet as Cato, and as an actor, his superhuman martial arts abilities made him a star. He won the hearts of a large audience. However, Bruce Lee was challenged because of a lack of opportunities in Hollywood for an actor who belongs to Asia. He believed in continuous learning taught by Napoleon Hill. So one night, he sat down and he wrote, My chief personal aim in life. I, Bruce Lee, will be the highest paid Asian superstar in the United States. In return, I will give the most exciting performances and render the best of quality in the capacity of an actor. Starting in 1970, I will achieve world fame, and from then onward till the end of 1980, I will have in my possession the sum of $10 million. Then I will live the way I please and achieve inner harmony and happiness. Asia is the source of another life changer for millions. Deep in an Asian rainforest, a small mushroom thrives. From generation to generation, this herb has been reported over several thousand years as having significant medicinal benefits. In ancient Asia, the mushroom called Ganoderma lucidum has been harvested and praised for its unique properties. Today it's paired with a gourmet organic coffee to produce Organo Gold. That discovery is the basis for one of the fastest growing companies worldwide. Organo Gold began in 2008 in Richmond, BC, Canada, in a small shop with only three employees. In just two short years, 
Organo Gold became the fastest growing network marketing company in the world. It's widely believed that nobody has sold more Ganoderma infused products than Organo Gold's co founder, Shane Morand. His ability to motivate and develop leaders all over the world has been a blueprint for many of Organo Gold's top distributors and has helped the company expand into six continents. Shane's visions have been instrumental in helping Organo Gold become one of the most admired network marketing companies in the world. And it started with an idea from just one of Napoleon Hill's vast collection of works. Shane explained how they broke all sales records. According to Shane, we broke growth records. We built more millionaires than any other company in history in such a short period of time. We began with Napoleon Hill's philosophy. We teach it, we train it. It's our secret weapon. In my opinion, the fastest way to develop your leadership is with a book that we have now published in five or six languages called Think and Grow Rich. Organo Gold markets a healthier coffee, tea, hot chocolate, and mocha. Shane travels all over the world to teach and train people how to start their own independent business and to use coffee and Organo Gold as a vehicle to generate extra income for their families. He says, we put together the teaching systems, we put together the component of success, which is leadership development. And our primary tool for teaching leadership development is Napoleon Hill. Every day, you've got to get better. You've got to work on yourself much harder than you work on your job. Work on you. You become better. Don't blame the company. The principles Andrew Carnegie shared with Napoleon Hill continue to influence people all over the world. It has been said that once the mind has been expanded by a new idea, it can never go back to its original shape. Andrew Carnegie's American Rags to Riches story has touched lives. Famous names across the American landscape are now international companies that have been inspired by the same principles that drove Carnegie and Hill. It was in the early 1940s when a boy of just 12 years old got his first job at a restaurant in downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, soon after, he lost his job in a dispute with his boss. Decades later, that same restaurant installed a large autograph poster photo of R. David Thomas just inside their entrance. Before Dave Thomas of Wendy's became a household name around the globe, he was a young cook in the army. At that time, he read Think and Grow Rich. The seed of his great idea was planted. Another success story is about W. Clement Stone. As a young man, Stone discovered Napoleon Hill's systems for becoming wealthy. Stone had already led a life of overcoming great odds to become successful. Chicago was much like the rest of America in 1900. The skyline we know today was only an idea. Everything we know started as an idea. Many of the things we now take for granted were not even dreamed of as yet. No internet, no television, not even radio. Something was about to change. In 1900, the new 20th century was the dawn of an era of invention, prosperity, and wealth. Discontent was abundant. On May 4th, 1902 in Chicago when W. Clement Stone was born. His father died in 1905 when W. Clement Stone was just three years old. So his mother found work as a dressmaker. Her long hours and hard work motivated the young Stone to go to work when he was only six. His first job was selling newspapers. I wanted to earn some money by selling newspapers because I didn't want to ask my mother for it. But I started walking north and saw at Halley's Restaurant when I walked in and sold a few papers and Mr. Halley kindly pushed me out the door. So I go in again and sell some more papers, and Mr. Halley this time pushed me hard and fast out the door. And so when he was in back of the restaurant, I came back in and started to sell, and Mr. Halley started coming over, and one of the customers uh, yelled out, Halley, let him alone. So he did. So I sold out. Next day, I came back with twice as many papers. When we developed a habit 
of cheerfully doing more than the minimum, we find that what we've given comes back to us multiplied. Determination paid off. By the time Stone was 13, he owned his own newsstand. Years later, he discovered a secret to turn his hard work into millions. He read one of Napoleon Hill's best-selling books, and that motivated him to parlay $100 he'd saved into millions with a strong desire to succeed. And by putting together the principles from Napoleon Hill, he was the living example of the rags-to-riches protagonists in Horatio Alger's stories that he loved so much. Some are lucky to begin young, but it's never too late to become successful. Such is the case for a World War II ace fighter pilot. When Og Mandino returned home to the States, his skills in the cockpit didn't translate very well to transition to a successful civilian life. And like he'd done for so many others, W. Clement Stone became an angel to Og Mandino. Mandino was an alcoholic at the time, whom Stone took under his wing. Og Mandino told his story worldwide about a cold winter in Chicago. On a lonely night in freezing snow, his discontent led him to the only free place that was warm inside, the public library. That day, he chose a book in the library in Chicago instead of a gun in a pawn shop. There are so many out there who may, might have reached the same position I did years ago when I came very close one morning at the age of 35 to buying a, a, a gun in a pawn shop. I saw in a pawn shop window and blow my brains out. I had lost my, my family, my, my daughter, my wife, my home, my job, and I was a drunk. I was laying in gutters, Joe. I'm, mm. I'm not ashamed to admit it now. Because uh, I, I figured the only way I could help anybody else is that they must understand where I'm coming from. The book by Napoleon Hill led Og Mandino to a lifelong relationship with W. Clement Stone. Mandino became the publisher of Success Magazine. That position led to the publishing of a bestseller based on the principles handed down. We came up one article shot and I went home and, and stayed up all night and I wrote a piece about Ben Hogan and how Ben came back from that terrible automobile accident he had when they told him he'd never walk again. Ben not only walked again, God love him, he, he won the National Open again. And I ran the piece in my magazine, my little magazine, Success Unlimited, and this is how, Joe, uh, I'm convinced that God plays chess with all of us in our lives. He, he makes a move and then he leans back and says, no, it's, it's, it's your move, Joe. You can make mm. it or not make it. In my case, the, that magazine came out with my article about Ben Hogan. It was the first article I had written for the magazine, although I'd been editing it for a year. I had too much to do just putting that baby together each month. And uh, what happened is that uh, a New York publisher got a toothache. And went out to his dentist in Long Island, and uh, he's sitting in the waiting room waiting to go in to be worked on, and he picks up off the coffee table in the waiting room, my little magazine, Success Unlimited. And he's a golf nut, and he flipped through the magazine, found my article on Ben Hogan, read it, and when he got into his office that afternoon, he wrote me a letter, and I still have the letter, Joe, which says, you've got talent if you ever decide to write a book, please get in touch with me. Uh -huh. And about two years later, a tiny little book came out called... <laughs> the greatest salesman in the world. It is now past, well, we're getting close to 14 million copies, Joe, in 18 languages. And uh, it just, uh, they tell me it continues to sell in paperbacks at the rate of 100,000 copies a month, and that's 25 years. That's, that's quite a record. Shane Moran of Organo Gold said that at an event in Las Vegas, one of the participants told Shane he had created the success system that could never fail. Then the person asked Shane if he'd ever read the book, The Success System That Can Never Fail. Shane asked who wrote it, and the person explained W. Clement Stone. According to Shane, I had heard of W. Clement Stone, but it was just heard of in Success Magazine. Shane explained that his plan was similar to W. Clement Stone's story. W. Clement Stone. You might have heard the name. Some of you have never heard of W. Clement Stone. But let me tell you his story because it freaked, when I heard the story, it's like, really? 
Is it true? And I researched and it's true. This is a true story. His team went from 800 to 200. And he's walking down the street in Chicago in 1937, the year it was written. The year of the book, and things weren't going so well. Did he quit? No. He's walking down the street and he looks into the window and he sees Think and Grow Rich, the year that it was written. Wow, that's what I said. Really? And he stops in his tracks. He goes, Think and Grow Rich. And he opens up the book and he starts reading a couple pages and something started to resonate. Something started to resonate, just like it did for me. And he buys the book and he goes home and he reads it and he reads it again and he reads it again. And he goes back to his work, into his office. What he did, because he had representatives that worked for the company, not independent. They were representatives that were getting paid commissions. And he said, it is mandatory for all my 200 distributors, I mean sales representatives, to read this book. And every day for 15 minutes, we're gonna read it together. Every day, 15 minutes. You gotta hear the punchline? Check it out. Are you ready for this? He took a company that went from 800 to 200. They started reading the book, Think and Grow Rich, over and over, and they started applying the principles. Read the book all you want, but you gotta apply what you learn. You gotta do it, not now. You gotta apply the book. Three years later, how many years? Three. He took that small team of 200 distributors, I mean uh, representatives, and he became the first company in U.S. history of its kind to go to one billion dollars in sales in three years. Hello! W. Clement Stone once stated, regardless of what you are or what you have been, you can still become what you want to be. Lessons from Andrew Carnegie that inspired Napoleon Hill continued to drive W. Clement Stone throughout his life. Stone eventually teamed up with Napoleon Hill to co-write Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. Stone, Hill, Mandino, and others were not the first to discover that universe holds special secrets to success. Special moments are coming to you. These moments are not ordinary. They are destiny-altering moments designed to thrust you years ahead. It was written several thousand years ago in Ecclesiastes that time and chance come together for every person. In our fast-changing world of the 21st century, news online, radio, and television, there are just too many stories of people who are blaming parents for their own failures. The truth is, as emphasized by Napoleon Hill, it doesn't matter what's happened to you in the past. You can still achieve what you want. Napoleon Hill taught throughout his volumes of work that we have to take responsibility for the experiences handed down to us. He recognized the need for tools and instructions to help others differentiate the difference between the good and the bad lessons of the past. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve, regardless of how many times you may have failed in the past or how lofty your aims and hopes may be. Andrew Carnegie moved to the United States with nothing and went on to become the richest man in the world. He spent the first part of his life making a fortune, then the second half of his life giving it all away. His vision for a system that the average person could use to become wealthy is considered by many to be his greatest contribution. I caught my first fleeting glimpse of the profound law which provides the means by which we may choose our own purpose in life and attain it while I was being coached by Andrew Carnegie during the organization of the science of success philosophy. You grow because of your gift to that other person. Who better qualified than the richest man in the world to map out a legitimate and highly effective approach to building wealth? Andrew Carnegie recruited Napoleon Hill to take the important task to document these principles for generations to use. Napoleon Hill devoted more than 20 years to making sure that he had crafted a legitimate and tested system to building wealth. And the best definition of success which I know is this. Success is the knowledge with which to get whatever you want from life 
without violating the rights of others and by helping others to acquire it. His life work revealed in hundreds of lectures, speeches, articles, books, audio and video programs have been revised in a systematic course called Your Right to Be Rich. It is the go-to resource to take the best information for the most successful people who've ever lived. Almost every personal development speaker and author refers back to Napoleon Hill. Why? Because his system is simply the best. Carnegie believed almost everyone has what it takes to become wealthy, and that statement includes you. You too can become wealthy if you simply follow the right steps. The systematic organization of this information is the pull of a bright future that leads you into a new world. The journey from where we have been to where we are all going begins with the correct information and skills. The sharpest skills, the right principles for success. Your right to be rich has the answers you need. Your right to be rich from Napoleon Hill.